Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We have a great tutorial today because we're going to be doing this heads up display effect here with the titles and a lot of great infographics in here. There's a ton of elements and I'm excited to show you guys how to create this. So if you're doing, you know, heads up display graphics or, you know, technology infographics, if you will, there's a lot of great techniques from this tutorial that should serve you well. Perfect timing. Now this tutorial is inspired by a video HUD product called Quantum HUD Infographic which has 350 pre-made HUD infographics that you can easily bring into After Effects as a plugin and you just drag and drop any of these 350 HUD elements into After Effects. So go ahead and check our links in the description if you're looking for inspiration or if you're looking to save some time with creating heads up display infographics. And that link will take you directly to learn more about Quantum HUD Infographic. So right off the bat, all I have in here is my text, no animation, and the typeface that I'm using is Gotham. So first things first, I want to animate the text. So we want to kind of give it that technology sort of feel. And of course, you know, this font choice has a big play into it, but I really want to focus on the animation of this video. So let's go ahead and open this up. Let's go to animate and let's add opacity. Come here and add a keyframe for start. Go forward in time to maybe like two seconds and set it up to 100%. So you'll just have this fade on like this, nothing special, but I want this to feel a little bit more random. So let's go into the advanced tab and where it says randomize order, we need to set this to on. So now you'll see that each of these elements come on individually and that looks pretty cool, right? So let's say we want to add a little bit of a flicker to some of these last letters here. What we can do is maybe come to right here before the last letter pops up. We can add a keyframe for start percentage and move forward, set this to 100%. We'll copy both these keyframes, we'll move, zoom in here a little bit, we'll move forward and we can paste these in here and we'll add a little bit of a nice flicker to our entire animation. So. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. And if you want, we can add some separation between the keyframe. And maybe I'll drag out the last keyframes a little bit. And maybe make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on my keyboard. And if we scrub through this here, we have our title popping up and we have that nice flicker. And that looks pretty cool. And for the last element here, since if you're doing a subtitle, I don't really want to focus on a subtitle animation, but to quickly animate this hit to your keyboard, hold down Alt on your keyboard, stop click, click the stopwatch, <laughs> type in time, asterisk or star, and you can type in 100 divided by 4. And what this does, it says, hey, animate this from 0% to 100% over 4 seconds. So this way we could just avoid keyframes. And that's pretty quick. And if you want to make this quicker, if you're doing a subtitle, you can change the number to like 2. It'll be 2 seconds. If you keep it at 4, it's going to be 4 seconds. And I like that gradual display because we don't need too much, you know, uh, animation on the title since we are creating you know, other infographics here. So this is where we're at here and it looks good. What we can do here is maybe just select both of our titles here. We can pre-compose this and we can call this titles. All right, and if you, and to pre-compose, you go up to layer, pre-compose. I kind of went a little too quick there, but pre-compose there. All right, so now let's talk about creating some of these elements. So let's come here, let's grab the ellipse tool. And I want to create like a circle here in the background. So what we can do is click on the word fill, make sure that's set to solid color. And let's come here and lower the opacity of the so solid color to maybe 16%. We can change the color of this to maybe like a, a nice sort of blue color there. Uh, we come here to stroke and we can select our blue fill color. And it's actually not the same color. We'll change that in a second. And we'll come over here, grab the ellipse tool again, make sure it's selected. Hold down shift on our keyboard to draw out a perfect circle. And if you hold down control on a PC, it'll draw out from the center. And boom, there is our circle and go to the align tab if you don't see the align tab go up to window align and you can center this up and this is right in the middle of our composition and that looks good and that's where we're at if we want maybe we can increase the stroke by a little bit all right i went ahead and readjust this a little bit but go ahead and bring this circle underneath our title so now what i want to do is grab the pen tool and bring up our title saves like this so you click on the crosshair you go to title action save and I want to add a point directly in the center of our composition like this. And I want to go all the way up to the top of our circle here with the stroke. Hold down shift on your keyboard so you draw a straight line. And I want to do the same thing over here. Just hold down shift. And we'll go ahead and clean this up like this. So now we have this perfect right angle. And now what we want to do is hold down alter on keyboard. And we can kind of get these um, curves like this, right? I'm going to go ahead and drag out the right vertice all the way until we have this perfect like circle like so, like is being this semicircle on the side here is just this vertices taking up the actual 
you know, stroke there and then hold down alt on this one. And I'm going to bring this in all the way to the center there. So now we kind of have like this fourth slice here and that looks pretty good. And we'll call this layer slice. And now what we can do is hit R on our keyboard for rotation. Alt click the stopwatch and type in time star 360. And basically this is going to rotate every second. So we don't have to do any keyframes and this will animate just like this and that looks really good. All right, so I want to add a crosshair in here. So grab the pen tool, make sure the fill color is set to white and we can bring our title saves back up if we want to, it doesn't really matter. And we'll click a point down here and go all the way to the bottom of the circle and actually click on the word fill and set this to none. Click on the word stroke and set this to solid color and come here to fit. So now we have a stroke in here and we might need to set this to white. There we go. And to center align this, we go to the line tab and just make sure this is centered up within our comp and it is. And so now we'll grab the pen tool again and we'll just come over here to the top and just add a point like this. Perfect. And we can make sure we center align that and we can just move it over until it's centered up. Perfect. All right. Make sure you go to shape two in the shape layer, go to add and you add a repeater. And from here, you come here to the repeater transform repeater one. You come here to the position, the X position, set this to zero, go to the Y position. And you can bring this down and you can see we have duplicates and now go to fit and we can increase the number of copies all the way to the bottom. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect if you don't like it so much, but if you need to, you can just increase the Y position until you see fit. So maybe we'll do like 24, we'll lower the copies to 37. And we we'll might need to go to 25 on the position, maybe like 24.5. Yeah, so you kind of just have to finesse it a little bit. All right, so that's looking good as well. And we can just do the uh, hit R on our keyboard for rotation. I'll click it and type in time star 360 and now we have this in here and make sure this layer is underneath our titles as well and actually we'll probably put it underneath this entire circle so it blends in a little bit better and we'll lower the opacity on this as well to maybe like 50 percent all right so that kind of just blends in there nicely together and we'll also lower the opacity of the slice here as well so everything will blend nicely together once we start combining more you know compositing elements in here so let's go ahead and create this background real quick so come here grab the polygon tool and this is very simple so make sure no fill is on go to stroke and maybe we'll set this to like one or two we'll see in a second and all we have to do is hold down shift on our keyboard and we can draw out a nice polygon size like that that's fine and we click off it that's all we have and we go to the polystar settings underneath the contents go to polystar path one and we can set this to like sides up to or points up to six and now you got six sides and now what we can do is make sure polystar one is selected go to add and we'll add a repeater and just like before we can come here increase the number of copies and of course and we want to come here to the transform repeater one go to the exposition and have this set to where these are just touching each other right so like they're overlapping just to the point where it makes sense and that looks great and now what we can do now what we can do is just click on the word contents, go to add and add another repeater. Open up repeater one, come here to the transform repeater one, and we'll set the X position down to zero, increase the Y position. And now we'll increase the X position to where these like kind of overlap here. So, and readjust the Y position until they overlap and that's perfect. And now we'll increase the number of copies to all the way to the bottom. Come here to fit, that looks great. And now we can just, you know, move this over and if you need to increase the number of copies go ahead and do that and we can call this one uh, background and we'll put this underneath everything and we can lower the opacity by hitting T and we'll lower it down a little bit so it makes sense and now we kind of have this uh, polygon background that might look a little bit huddish and that looks cool so we still have a little bit of work to do to you know, make this look composited together. So let's go ahead and add uh, these lines up here real quick because this is, you know, extra, just extra content to add more detail to this. We can click on the, the pen tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to click here, maybe hold down shift on your keyboard, and we're just going to kind of create this unique uh, pattern in a very straight line sort of deal. Okay. And we'll go all the way to the end there. And boom, there is our line. And maybe we'll increase the size up to six. Remember that was seven. 
and we'll come over here go to the shape layer go to add and we'll add trim paths open up trim paths decrease the end percentage here we'll alt click the stopwatch for offset and we'll type in time star 200 and this will kind of animate over two seconds and that looks cool so we'll come here and maybe change the color to like this blue and we'll come over here we'll we'll call this one uh line one we'll duplicate this layer and we'll move it up and shift it over a little bit and we'll offset it in time we'll hit u on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes or the expressions and we'll come over here and we'll set this to 100 so it'll be offset in time nice okay so now we have these two lines in here these nice elements and i want to come over here and want to start adding some effects to this to really make this pop so let's go up to effect stylize glow and let's come here to the glow threshold let's bring this down by a little bit let's increase the glow radius and also the intensity and maybe we'll actually jump the glow intensity all the way up to like six and we'll bring down the glow radius to almost about 35. so that looks cool and we come over here duplicate this effect so it'll be just as intense and now we can copy this and paste it over to our line and now we have these nice glowing elements in here and also we can paste this to the rest of our elements so maybe like we'll do the circle and obviously this is really crazy so let's go back into our circle layer and let's go to the fill and set the opacity down to like two percent and that will blend nicely together in there and i also want to put this onto our titles and maybe actually i'll just do this onto our main title separately and we'll definitely maybe just do one glow since i think that's a little too much so we'll delete both those glows and keep that just by itself and that looks pretty cool and let's come here let's duplicate our lines again and we'll make sure both these layers are selected go to layer transform flip uh, horizontal layer transform and flip vertical and we might need to actually bring these down a little bit nice so now we have these elements going on in here and that looks cool and i'm actually going to bring down the stroke size of this to maybe like three so we're looking pretty good at this point i want to add some distortion to this so let's go here to the project window let's create a new composition and we can call it distort and i'm going to come over here grab the rectangle tool make sure it's just fill selected and we'll turn off the stroke it doesn't matter what color it is and i'm going to just draw out these lines like this very random it doesn't have to make any sense but we're just going to do this okay and now since this is in here we'll go back into our main composition we'll bring in this distortion layer we'll turn it off and we'll go to uh, layer new adjustment layer we'll go to effect distort and we'll add displacement map and we'll go here to the displacement map layer and set this to our distortion layer and if we come here you can see that we can actually distort our screen like this and that is really cool so what we'll do is we'll obviously increase the uh, max horizontal displacement and it's up to you if you want to affect the y is really you know up to you i'm gonna keep it at the same maybe we just want a couple of distortions in here so maybe we'll distort it around two seconds we'll bring in the endpoint of the adjustment layer we'll move forward by a couple of frames go up to edit split layer bring that endpoint in by a little bit and do the same thing with the split layer and you can also remember the shortcut and you can really like go through this quickly so i added just a little bit extra elements in here these are just circles with a repeater on it and this is just a l bracket just to add, just add a little bit more technology to it i just don't feel like this is worth putting in the tutorial at this point since we've already covered a lot of shape layer aspects so and like i said and like i said at the beginning of the video if you're looking for some ideas go ahead and check out quantum as there are 350 elements that you can look at and gather ideas and inspiration for your own project so this is what we have so far in this video and it looks pretty unique and cool now obviously we can add a little bit more distortion or some rgb splitting which i'm going to do in this video uh, however i have plenty of tutorials on doing this sort of thing so i will link rgb splitting and other distortion tutorials that i've done in the past those links will be in the description of this video and i want to show you guys how to really spice this up within a couple of seconds so go ahead and check out those other videos if you want to learn a little bit, learn a little bit further links will be in the description this is something called animation studio and i have all these presets here like distortion and other elements like camera shots and chromatic aberrations uh you know transitions light leaks uh color effects color correction it's really awesome i'll go ahead and link this in the description it's called montage library and let's just show you how awesome this is quick so come here to chromatic and we can find a preset that we really like we can preview it 
So I want to add this glitch effect in here. So all I have to do is select it and I'll just move this over. And now with our RAM preview, we're able to take this to the next level within like a couple of seconds. So it's really interesting that you can add like this extra distortion within like 10 seconds instead of taking 30 minutes to recreate this from scratch. And like I said, I have tutorials on this type of effects. Those links will be in the description. I just feel it would be redundant to reteach it in this video. So go ahead and check out my links in the description. And of course, I have a full review video on Montage Library. So you can also check that out if you're interested in this uh, plugin, which is just a bunch of drag and drop 750 effects and transitions that you can do in 10 seconds and it'll save you, you know, hours of time in the long run. Go ahead and check that out if you're looking to save some time. So this is our final result. Make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers and then turn it on at the top and you should be good to go. And as I said in the beginning of the video, check out Quantum to get some amazing inspiration from these awesome HUD elements that will definitely take your work to the next level. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and able to learn a few things. So if you did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos. Be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be creating.